Hello world, this is Craig. This is a photograph of a computer made by MIL back in the early 70s and it's called the Mod 8. It was based on the 8008 system and this is a photograph from uh, York University Computer Museum. The reason we're looking for at a photograph is because I've never actually seen one of these things in the flesh and uh, there's only a few photogra photographs for it online and they just seem to be the same one over and over again. I would really like to have an 8008 system. I don't have any. I have a 4004 and then on up to you know, a dozen 8080 systems, but I didn't have anything for the 8008. And I'm not generally into reproduction hardware, but the cost of vintage hardware has just it's just gotten so expensive. I don't know if people are hanging this stuff on their walls or in art museums or where this is all going, but the vintage hardware is really, really expensive. And I've been searching for years for an Intel sim 8 which is their like the sdk version based on the 8008 i happen to come across this fellow in canada his name is charles and i'll put a link to his website below and he's got a blog and on the 8008 but so i've come to the conclusion if you want to know anything about the mod 8 that's the place to go and he's recently created and released a set of reproduction boards for the mod 8 and they you know they look very intriguing it was a bit pricey but you know on low volume you expect the boards to be expensive but uh really it was his documentation that he had he had all of the documentation available for this which includes the original schematics all the original users manuals the original software the the monitor that was in it and you know this assembly guide that he's put together is you know 40 pages or whatever and i was figuring okay well somebody that's gone to that much work to do such a nice assembly guide with you know nice bill of materials and everything in it, uh, you know he really cares about this thing and 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 uh, so maybe I'd, I'd go ahead and give it a try. So I bought a set of boards, thinking that it's not going to cost me that much because somewhere I have some 8008s that I've been hauling around for at least 40 years, and I have a couple of tubes of 1702 EEPROMs. I've got uh, uh, you know dozens of, of vintage uh, TTL chips and and uh, connectors of all kinds, and uh, I said, okay, well I've got I've got uh, a whole bunch of these nice little uh, card edge connectors that have the guides on them, and these were used in a system that I had. This is a, an 8086 based system, same bus. You know, this is kind of a, kind of a common vector. Uh, bus, I think, from the from the A from the days, and uh, I also had some just some of the original cinch cards that were used uh, on the original boards. This is the 5044B-10 cinch cards that were used in the original backplane, according to the instructions. But uh, when the boards showed up, it turns out that the holes for the uh, backplane connectors are only big enough for a regular dip socket or a wire wrap socket or something and they're not big enough for any of the card cages or the, the, uh, the card edge connectors that I had and then put on top of that that I didn't I, I've looked and looked and I cannot find my old 8008s so I had to wind up and go out and buy those also so all totaled in addition to the boards I didn't have the backplane connectors I didn't have the 8008 uh, I did have one extension card that works, although it's shorter than what uh, would be useful for this system. So I'm pretty well starting from scratch, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna cost a bit more than I originally was planning on on spending. But the thing is, now I'm into it. I got the cards, uh, and so I'm into it, and I still want an 8008 system. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this. I'm gonna do some videos of building the system. Uh, Charles has some videos online. There's a link below for uh, his videos, but this is going to be from a perspective of somebody that, that didn't lay the board out and, and didn't do the design and uh, maybe maybe some more technical uh, uh, background. So on the back plane, you can see this is a big board. This is you know, 13 and a half inches by five inches or so. Nice quality board. Uh, uh, so he did a, a good job with the quality of the board, with the layout. He tried to duplicate the original layout uh, whenever possible. And uh, some of the components are a little harder to find. You got to get them off eBay or uh, happen to know somebody that's got some. But it's a, it's a beautiful board for the back plane. And what we have is we've got 
a EEPROM burner over here. We can we can program EEPROMs. We've got an interface for a teletype, so we can connect it up to our teletype. Power supply comes in. There's also to go along with this a power supply board that uh, gives us our, our uh, 75 volts for the the programmer and our 5 volts and 12 volts uh, everything that we need for the the processor. And that was part of part of his little kit. You can go to his website and see all the boards that are in his kit. So let's look at the way that this is laid out. It's interesting that they broke this down into very basic uh, uh, elements. And the, the first thing that they have is the restart, the teletype interface and the restart. And that goes into here. That's called Mod 2. This is the Mod 2 board. And it has, uh, of course, the interface for the teletype, but also when you do a reset, this pushes the first address onto the bus so the 8080 knows where to go. So that's the teletype restart board, and that has to go into this first position. The next position is for the CPU board. So this is for the 8008. And as I mentioned in a, in a video a couple of videos ago, that you know if you were uh, starting a design for the 8080 or the 8008, you would certainly want to use as many Intel support chips as possible. And this board doesn't use any of them. It, it creates the clock from scratch. So you have some pots here where you adjust the timing for the clocks because this requires the, the two-phase clock. And uh, that's the CPU board. Now the CPU, the 8008, had very, very pathetic drive capabilities and it, it couldn't drive the rest of this bus. So the next slot has to be the buffer board. So here's the buffer board, uh, has a bunch of uh, uh, buffers on it, bidirectional buffers. And so this basically just serves the purpose of kicking things out onto the bus for uh, the higher drive and latching uh, some of those things. So that's the buffer board. The next board up, or the next slots, there's four slots here that can be for memory, either ROM or RAM. And here's his 1702 ROM uh, board and the RAM board based on the 2102 static RAMs. Okay, so you can have a total of four memory boards and the original monitor that they have for this board uses, uh, uh, it fills up one ROM board for the monitor for the 8008. So you can still have two slots left over for additional RAM or additional ROM. Okay, the last two slots, one of them is for the input board. And these are hardwired and you can see they come out to a header here on the end. So it's already uh, uh, configured and not a lot of flexibility in that other than just like the memory boards, you can define the address of the port. And finally, there is the uh, output board. Okay, now there's also later after the 8008, they came out with the 8080 version of the controller. So you take out the 8008 card and you put in the 8080 card. And it, again, it creates the clock from scratch and a little bit of glue chips here, but uh, this is the 8080 version of it. And because the 8080 had much, much higher drive capabilities than the 8008, you don't need the buffer card. So there's just a little jumper card that goes into its place uh, of the, the buffer card. And the other thing I, I mentioned was I did get two extra when I ordered these. Uh, uh, Charles pointed out that if you want to use the monitor that is for the 8080, it requires two ROM boards. And since I didn't want to be switching a bunch of uh, uh, ROMs around in their socket. I just bought one extra card so I could have these and not have to be switching things around. Okay, so this is my latest project. This is the uh, uh, Mod 8, and uh, it's something I'm really looking forward to. And as I get these boards and I start putting them together and doing some of the diagnostics on them and, and any problems that come up or basically maybe even some of the, the little technical details, the fun things about it, I'll do a video on those. 
But I just wanted to let you know this was out there. It looks like something that's really going to be fun to do. And it's uh, maybe to resurrect some, some old 8008 hardware. Okay, that's all I've got for now. And if you have any questions, let me know. But certainly check out uh, Charles's website and his blog on the Mod 8. Looks like a lot of good information there and certainly a lot of old documentation and a lot of hard work has gone into that. Okay, thanks for watching and I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.